Hey folks, it's Farmer Marshall. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's hot out here. Word of warning to all of you folks that are under 30 or even under 40. Once you get to be about 40 something, you're gonna suffer in this heat. And not only did I suffer, but my garden suffered. So I'm gonna show you some few things just to be completely honest about what's going on in my garden right now. My garden's had a hard time with the heat and tragically, my persimmon tree has had a major issue with it. So I'm gonna get to the persimmon tree later on in this video. Hang around for that part, but let me show you what's going on in my main garden, specifically with my tomatoes. But fortunately, I have a solution for that. So hang on. So, so my tomato plants have been through the ringer. I came out here yesterday to work with it some, and today I figured I'd bring you along a little bit. And this is what I'm looking at. All this, all of this here, what a mess. I hate to say it, I've dealt with this different years. And I knew it was coming. I tried to do what I could. I put a, um, a shade cloth over a large part of my garden. It seemed to have helped some because I'm still getting production, but not enough. Fortunately, I had a solution for it. I have backup plants. If you can see these tomatoes over here, the, this is a plant I just put in yesterday. No, I didn't go to Lowe's or Home Depot and buy new plants. These were some plants that I had, I had taken some cuttings from my tomato plants earlier this year. It's pretty good size. I can cut that off. That's about a 12 inch plant. Now I can take this stem put in some water, let the roots grow, and then I'll have a completely new plant. Well, enough talk. These are the results. I potted some, gave them away, but I had about five or six that I just had in a big pot in my, on my deck. And since the deck is covered, these plants here have done really well. Except they really haven't put anything on in sight from leaves. I do see a few little buds here where tomatoes will develop. I have another one over here where plenty of leaves. It's a good sized plant, probably about a foot and a half tall. It was probably two feet tall, but I buried a long portion of the roots. I did that yesterday. And like I said, these were just from cuttings. I really wasn't getting any tomatoes off of it. But let me show you the other cuttings I had, because these here are great, and I'm going to be putting some more out here, and they will produce. As a matter of fact, one of the ones on the deck, it's funny, it had one or two cherry tomatoes on it. So I'm going to be replacing some of these plants that went bad with plants that haven't suffered as much. And the good thing about these, these guys have huge roots on it. So I think they are gonna do even better than the ones I had out here. And I did take a couple plants out, but I'm gonna leave some of these others because some of these plants that are doing bad still have life on it. So I'm not gonna assume that the plant is dead, dead, dying, or dying, dying, dead. I think I can still salvage some of these plants, but in the meantime, I have some plants that obviously can do much better. So come on, come with me as we move these other plants. That's my chicken poop there. 
that's what I've been using all year for my garden I did a test with some of my peppers and the ones that had chicken poop were so much bigger than the ones that didn't but anyway come through my mess of a yard say hi Prince bear they're hanging out here they were hanging out under the deck and under my um, under my muscadine plant you won't see them come up on the deck because they know they're not supposed to be out here so these are the tomato plants that I these were grown from cuttings and I mentioned that one or two of them had a tomato on it so let's see if we can find that oh and blooms right here blooms ah here's that little tomato I'm guessing this is a cherry tomato plant but not for sure we'll see so let's go on and take this out I poured them out this way <laughs> Nice, nice root system. So I'm going to be replanting these. You might wonder why they didn't bloom or didn't put on many tomatoes. Well, to be honest with you, I really wasn't taking care of these. I just put some water on them. But I really wasn't planning on using these plants at all. But for whatever reason, I didn't throw them away. Look how long these plants are. At least two and a half feet tall. So I'm going to replant these guys. And I think my phone is overheating. So we'll, we'll see if it's going to actually record this. Or record sound from this. Okay. I like when he, they stop right there. They usually don't come in the garden because they uh, I kick them out. So. Some of my squash survived the heat and squash bugs, but others didn't. I know, different subject. But these guys here, these were some replacement plants I put in yesterday. These are all replacement plants. From seed, not from starts. I love using seeds parsley because I'm cheap and I can get a better variety of plants when I use seeds so let me get this hole dug out I'll get right back to you look at the roots on this one I mean that's a good eight inches probably close to the ten. Oh yeah this guy's gonna do great I already dug the hole out. I'm gonna mix it in. Now since these plants have plenty of size, I'm not going to worry so much about adding 511 to it. I am going to add some to it eventually, but 
since they already have the size and good roots I'm more concerned with getting production on blooms and on fruit. This is 21515. Plenty of phosphorus and potassium. That'll help with blooms, fruit production. I have three holes out here I'm going to fill in. Sorry about that. Make sure you get watered in thoroughly. And that's what this old bucket of 511. But it's not 511. I'm mixing water with my uh, my 215-15. And hopefully that will help get this plant put in normal blooms. Like I said, it has plenty of growth on it. So I'm not overly concerned about that. I want blooms. I want fruit. I want tomatoes. And I dug out three holes. So I'm going to put all these to a test and see how well they grow as far as blooms and fruit. I'll get back with you later on. But let's go on and check out my um, my persimmon tree. So now, let's take a walk over here to my persimmon tree. Oh my goodness. This is what happened. Let me see if I can bring you in. Now you see that, kind of see that pallet that I have up here helping to support a branch. The reason I'm doing that is because this branch split right here. Yeah. You know, these branches was, was hanging down low because it was loaded and music it handles the load but this time it couldn't and the branch was hanging low and it split this happened a couple weeks ago and as you can see plenty of persimmons on here just tons of persimmons but since it's still partially connected to the tree, I'm not going to give up on it. As you can see, some of the fruit is, well, all the fruit is still hanging on there. This one's turning colors. You might think it's rotting. It might be, I don't know. Because some of the other branches that didn't fall are starting to turn too. Usually they kind of turn a little oranges, a little orange, I'm sorry, a little yellowish first. And then they, uh, like if you look at this one here, it's starting to turn. That one's the same color as the one, or as the ones over here that are on the branch that partially broke off. So, I'm not going to assume that they're turning bad. And that's why I didn't just take the branch completely off. I just supported it some. I'm like, it's going to do what it's going to do. Hopefully, I can get some fruit off of this branch. And once the fruit turns yellow, these, these persimmons are going, to, are going to turn orange. They're naturally going to turn orange. This is a branch that wasn't separated. But I learned last year, this is a, I always forget the name, <laughs> Fuyu persimmon. These are not astringent. So when they aren't completely ripe, you can eat them. You can eat them before they turn orange and jelly-like. That's what the astringent persimmons do. These persimmons, once they turn yellowish, I can actually eat them. They're going to be hard, firm, but they're not going to be bitter, and they're still going to have flavor to them. 
So if this plant or if, if this branch, if the persimmons on this branch can maintain life and not rot, if they continue to ripen, I'm probably not going to wait for them to turn orange. I may do that with some, I may, I'm going to let them do whatever they're going to do. But at the very least, if I can get them to turn yellow, I'm going to harvest probably half of them and see what happens. This wasn't heat related. This was just structure of the tree. You can see this branch here hanging down low. But you see where it's coming from. It's coming from up here. That's about five feet high. This branch here is hanging down at the lowest point, about a foot and a half, a foot, foot and a half off the ground. So that's what it does. I'm going to cut from right here and let the tree do what it does while I'm waiting until I can harvest something. And hopefully I won't have that issue anymore. We'll see. This branch here is hanging. I'm gonna figure out something to do with that. It's not hanging real bad, but I'm gonna figure out something to do with that in the, uh, in the fall winter. But for now, that's what's going on with my persimmon tree. Very disappointed, very disappointed. <laughs> I'm not gonna say I'm heartbroken. It's a tree, I can grow another one, and it's not dead, so. But it had some damage. Anyway, I just figured I'd bring you on to show you some of the life that's going on and the tragic life that's going on in my garden. Hey, things aren't always pretty, but you know what? You can't give up. You just keep growing and growing and growing and seeing what happens. So, all I gotta tell you, and let me say this to you face to face. As the gardener like you guys are, only thing I can say is, you know, you're gonna have some bad things happen in the garden. It's bound to happen. You're gonna have plants that die, you can have trees that break, you're gonna have fruit that goes bad, but you're gonna have some good things that happen. You're gonna have a tree that's still surviving, still producing fruit, even though this branch here is, is heartbreaking. You're gonna have things that happen. You're gonna have fruit that go bad, you can have vegetables that go bad, you can have things that you thought were gonna be good that turn out just horrible. But don't give up, keep growing. This is free food. It will always be free food. So as I always say, let's get out there and get a little dirty.